Hey, so I've got a question about quadratic formula. Uh, I'm going to run through some examples of these quadratic equations uh, and using the quadratic formula to uh, solve them. Now, back in week two, I posted an announcement that had a, a little song in there for the quadratic formula that may help remember it if you're kind of more of that auditory type uh, learner or whatever. Uh, but the quadratic formula says that if we have an equation that looks like this, where a, b, and c are some numbers, okay, and it's equal to zero, then the solution for that is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> It's just a matter of identifying the A, B, and C, substituting into your formula, uh, and then, you know, simplifying that. So let's suppose we have 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 equals 0. Okay. And I want to solve that. So one trick that you might want to do just to help kind of organize things is actually write down what A, B, and C are. So a is the number in front of x squared, so it's 2. b is the number in front of x, but you got to pay attention because if it's a minus sign, you know, that's a negative, so that's a negative 3 because our formula has a plus b in it, okay? So there's one place that people make sign errors all the time is forgetting about that, and then the c is equal to 1. Okay? So my solution then is x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2a, okay, which is 2 times 2. Okay. Now, I suggest that you worry about what's inside of the radical first, okay? <clears throat> and just, you know, we're just following the order of operations. Anything in parentheses, the next bones, all that stuff. So we're going to have, uh, I'm going to do this step by step. So I'm going to deal with my exponents first. Okay? And remember, what's under a radical, that radical is considered some parentheses. Okay? Now I'm going to worry about... Uh, Still the, the multiplication in there. Okay, so that's 9 minus 8. And notice I'm just worrying about the numerator first. I like to do things kind of in a particular order, so that way I do it the same way kind of every time. Plus or minus 1 over 2 times 2. Okay. And at this point, I've got things simplified enough I can think now. This plus or minus really means we have two answers here. One time when we're going to do a plus, so that's 3 plus 1. I'm going to go ahead and do the 2 times 2 is 4. And the other is 3 minus that number. Okay. So that's 4 over 4 for that one, and this one is 2 over 4. So our two solutions are 1 and 1 half when I reduce those. Let's try another one. Okay. So we have it equal to zero. And in this case, a is going to be a negative one. Because remember, any time that you don't have don't see a coefficient there, it's always one times that. Okay. So a is negative one, b is two. C is a negative 3. So x equals negative b. Notice every time I make a substitution, I always put it in parentheses. You cannot go wrong by doing that. But if you leave a parentheses out, you can. 2 squared minus 4 times a times c. All over 2 times a. Negative 1. So 
So I'm dealing with that exponent. I'm just going to worry about the discriminant. Now, sometimes I go ahead and multiply the denominator now. So I might just go ahead and multiply 2 times negative 1, get it out of the way. Now, 4 times negative 1 times negative 3 would be 12. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's negative 8. Over, that's supposed to be a negative 2, but boy, was that a long negative sign. Okay, now right here, we have a negative under the radical. Okay, anytime that you have a negative that's underneath of the square root, this tells us that there's no real solution. <coughs> okay. Um, now, let's... Um, what happens if it's not equal to zero? Right. Let, let's pretend for a second uh, that we've got... 4x squared minus 3x equals, uh, let's see, what do I want to make it? About 28. That might work, who knows. Okay. If it's not equal to zero, then you need to get all of the terms on one side of that equal sign. So the first thing I would do here Let's go ahead and subtract 28 from both sides. Now be careful, on this left-hand side, when I subtract that, there are no like terms. I can't combine that 28 with either the 3x or the 4x squared because they are not like terms. So I'm just going to have 4x squared minus 3x minus 28 is equal to 0. Now once I have it to 0, I can set up my stuff for the quadratic formula. So a is 4, b is negative 3, and c is negative 28. Okay. And my solution then is negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Notice... I say the formula, and I write it down all the time. Every time I use it, I say it. Um, when I'm trying to memorize something, every time I uh, use it, I also write it down because that helps the whole memorization process. Okay? Um, so do little things like that. Don't just write stuff down. Actively try to go ahead and memorize it because that will save you time on the exams and stuff like that. That's going to be 9 minus 4 times 4. Now we're going to have uh, so we're going to have the two minuses. The minus negative gives me that plus. Okay, so now I need to see if that square root simplifies any. Okay. <laughs> and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just uh, do some scratch work off to the side over here and say, okay, well, when I simplify radicals, I always do the little factor tree thing. And let's see, 457. Uh, let's see, um, it's not divisible by 2, 3. And it is a prime number. Actually, I'm just, all I'm doing in my calculator is just trying things like 457 divided by 2. Okay? That is not a whole number. Okay? So I know it's not divisible by any other even number. So then I'm going to try maybe 3. Okay? 
it's not divisible by three. So it's not going to be divisible by six, nine, or any other multiple of three. So I'm, I'm trying to rule out the list. And I know when to stop checking. And this is just like factoring the polynomials. When do I stop checking? If I look at the square root of 457, that's 21 point something. I'm going to stop when I get to 21. If I haven't found something that divides into it by then, I'm not going to. So I would check 2, 3. I know 5 is not going to work. Um, 6, 7. Okay. Um, <coughs> 7 doesn't work. Uh, eight's an even number, so I'm not going to bother to try it. If two doesn't divide in it, just ignore all even numbers, right? Uh, same thing with threes and multiples of fives. Um, so uh, eight, nine, ten. So I would try 11, then I would try 13. That doesn't work. Then I try 17. That didn't work. Then I tried 19. Okay. That didn't work. And then 21 is a multiple of seven, and I've already tried seven. So nothing divides into its prime number then I have those two solutions. Now, remember, this plus and minus means I actually have two answers, right? It's 3 plus square root of 457 over 8, and the other one is 3 minus square root of 457 over 8. Now, in Mobius, and only for Mobius, okay, it wants its answers separated by a semicolon, okay? And that's just a computer programming thing. That's not the the real math way to do it. That's why I stress just in Mobius that you would put that. Okay. <coughs> so that's how we use our quadratic formula. Okay. Um, I, th I think the trick is sometimes to be a little bit organized and be a little bit patient uh, and be really careful about a couple of things. One, working that discriminant. Okay. Um, being really careful about the negative signs here, okay? Because we don't always have a negative in front, right? Because we get a negative negative, like in this case, it's a positive three, okay? Uh, the other thing is when you're typing things into the calculator, if you were to type in this final answer and you wanted um, a decimal for it for some reason, you need to have this entire numerator in parentheses. Or even if you're just typing that into Mobius, you want that in parentheses. So to type this into Mobius, okay, you would have parentheses 3 plus square root parentheses 457 close parentheses divided by 8. And then semicolon 3 minus square root, which is 3, 457, sorry. Close parentheses divided by 8. You have to have the parentheses around the numerator, and you also need to have these parentheses around the radicand, the number that's under the square root. Um, so I hope this helps.